All right, so <clears throat> not <laughs> not sure if that intro turned out the way I was I was thinking about, but you know uh, it was it was kind of fun to do, and we only did one take, so we're not putting that much effort into it. My camera used to be on this side, and it's kind of hard. I'm not used to looking at myself while I'm doing this. Camera used to be on this side, so I'm looking this way, and when I flipped it, the camera's now over here. So what that does is that makes it look like I'm totally just special because I'm looking this way and you guys are like what is on that side of the screen okay so this is the Sabenza 31 S35 VN with micarta inlays look at that finish that finish actually looks really good That titanium finish, I, I, it's some sort of blasted or something. Uh, it's definitely textured. Let's get a good focus here. All right, so this is Benz 31. Um, I'm doing another video with the face. I'm looking over there again. I'm doing another video with the face because... Uh, this is this is a special knife. Um, this thing is pretty awesome. It's also very highly high priced, but the quality of it feels kind of second to none. It's a very old school design that they've just barely modified and brought back. You know the action on it. <laughs> we'll talk about the action. I have no problem with the action. But I think I have a problem with us kind of like just making excuses for it, I guess. Um, that's not to say I don't like it. It's a different type of like. It is smooth, you know. But I, I just feel like we, we see stuff that's really, really good. And I've felt this before. Like, I, I understand that there's a lot that goes into this. But I have felt this before with just something that comes with phosphor bronze and, and Teflon. So it's not the excuse of it being... Anyways, we'll get to that in the review. Obviously, as you can see, I'm kind of torn with the Sabenza. Um, I really liked the hype. I really liked the feel. I, 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 you know, full disclosure, I like the ergonomics. I love the blade shape. Uh, I think it's a really good looking knife. And... Yeah, but there's there's some things that I don't like about it, right? And and we're gonna talk about that in the review. Uh, this is just kind of my intro to it. But in order to pay some homage to kind of like one of the founding members of our community, right? Uh, the Chris Reeve, you know, and his son. I think his name's Tim. I mean, you guys have no idea like how much of a hand they've had in in, in just building up stuff, right? So. Um, I'm just going I'm not gonna do what I did before where I'm gonna read it word for word, but I'm going to uh, kind of give you guys some backstory from what I read from their website, doing a little bit of digging. You can find all this information. It's not like it's hidden or anything. But Chris Reeve, I believe it was like 1984. They said started uh, the Chris Reeve knives in South Africa, which I never knew. That was pretty cool. Uh, he started in South Africa and just was on a quest to make the best. That's just, that, that was his quest. So he was, he's on a quest to make the best. And his difficulty there was that everything was pretty much underfunded. Like he hit a point where he just like might not have been able to continue going without investing some of his own money. You know, like it wasn't paying for itself as I interpret it right. Uh, so he ended up moving to Idaho. I don't know what it is with you Idaho boys. And making some badass knives and making them totally unobtainable for the average person. But, <laughs> you guys know who I'm talking about. Let's charge $700, $900 for a friggin' knife. That's awesome, but we can't touch it. Right? Looking at you, Koenig. Uh, the average person has trouble getting a hold of a Koenig. But, Chris Reeves over there, Idaho as well. Anyways, I digress. So he came over to the U.S., stationed himself in Idaho. And that's kind of where everything took off. I think he, I think there's actually like a community of guys out there because it made it sound like there was a little bit of help from other people. 
But if you guys didn't know, and this is controversial too, but this is called the Chris Reeve inter Integral Lock. No, you're not looking at anything special. It's a frame lock. That's it, right? They call this the Chris Reeve Integral Lock because I believe there's people say that he invented it. I don't know that he invented it because I was listening to some other channels that were like, this other guy invented it, but Chris Reed basically named it. So sucks to be the other guy, right? <laughs> so Chris Reed names this not, uh, this lock the Chris Reed Integral Lock. Very cool. Uh, it's the frame lock that we know. I mean, that's it. It's it's just a frame lock, and it's supposedly stronger than probably the liner lock. I think the school of thought is obviously there is a frame and not just a liner. Whether or not it is stronger or not, I don't know. I actually think a frame lock can fail probably just as easy depending on some of the frame locks will be stupid strong, right? But anyways, but that's not the only thing he had his hand in developing. All right. This guy. And yeah, I just woke up. If you're looking at this. Oh, that's bad hair. Bad hair all the way. You guys aren't over there. You're over there. That's bad hair. Bad hair all the way. All right. So <clears throat> he didn't just have his hand in. The integral lock. He didn't just have his hand in one of the best knives ever made, arguably. He had his hand in developing or helping develop CPM S30, CPM S35, and CPM S45, according to the website. That is cool. So. <clears throat> Just want to say thank you for the Spenza. Not that you gave it to me, but thank you for creating this and putting all your blood, sweat, and tears into these. Thank you for the Chris Reeve Integral Lock. And thank you for the S30, S35, and S40. It's rare that you get to say that to one individual. That's what makes it so unique. Let's get on with the review. This is the Spenza 31. This is the Sabenza 31 with the micarta inlays. And it is really cool looking. It's a very gorgeous knife, guys. Leave that there. So today we're going to be reviewing the Sabenza 31. This is the S35 VN version. Uh, and we'll kind of go over some thoughts on all that. But here's a quick view of the knife. It is a titanium frame lock with a matching titanium pocket clip, and this finish looks really cool. Uh, I unfortunately haven't found out what they do for the finish. It kind of looks like a rough blasting, and then, I don't, I don't know, it's just got a really cool, that's a really, really cool finish, though. Somebody inform me on what that finish is called. I think it looks amazing. Then we got these micarta inlays, which when I first got it, I just picked up the first Sabenza that was available at the time. I was kind of on a kick. And I'm really glad that I did get the micarta inlays because, oh, the difference. Um, I understand that I haven't felt the full TI version without the inlays, but uh, you can feel the grip on this, and it feels like it's a world of difference. So on the back here, we got kind of like a little barrel spacer there, a little stop pin right there. And then we have the little lanyard thing right there. I have an annoyance with that thing. Everything on the inside is pretty basic. We got your little cutout reliefs for the Chris Reeve integral lock. We have a nice consistent drop point blade shape with a very deep hollow grind, creating a pretty damn good slicey blade. Beautifully crowned spine with some jimping that is probably more functional than most. So that's very cool. A plunge grind that they kind of did this cutout where the blade doesn't, or the, the sharpened edge doesn't start till right here. Which means you're going to get from here to all the way up here in sharpening before you even create a smile. And uh, that's a good thing. That's going to be, that's a long freaking time of use. <laughs> Take a look at this hardware. This hardware is pretty much what we should be asking for in pocket knife hardware. So the pocket clip on this one is the exact same as the Umnumzan, but on this, it works really well. 
on the Umnuzon, it rips your hand in half. So it has nothing to do with the pocket clip. It goes to show that it's pocket clip placement. Uh, those of you that have had a stock Umnuzon, I would think you guys know what I'm talking about. The action on this, it's writing on phosphor bronze, but they're very unique phosphor bronze. I'm going to have to try to find a picture and put it here to kind of show you guys because it's, it's nowhere near what you guys are expecting when you think about phosphor bronze. They're like jigsaw puzzles that are all in one piece, but yeah. So <laughs> this is, as I said, the S35VN blade. Now, what kind of sucks about that is we're, I'm in the middle of this rollout, right? Okay, I bought my Chris Reeve Sabenza, born January 18th. Hey, this piece of my side fell out. January 18th of 2021, right? What gets put together on January 28th of 2021? The friggin' S45VN versions. So you know what that means for the S35VN version? I was on the market to trade this. And my value plummeted just because the S45s were out. I understand it, but it's frustrating. Okay, I'm going to get you guys some specs. We're going to go over some size comparisons. I'll give you some of my thoughts. Right there was just kind of me showing the knife. I'm going to give you my experiences and overall thoughts on the knife and the price. So, without further ado, this is the large Sabenza, by the way, not the small. There is a smaller version, and there is, like, a ton of versions. All right. So, the overall weight of this guy is coming in at a 4.44 ounces. Perfectly manageable. It, to me, feels not too much, but feels enough. The weight of this guy is the perfect, like, good-feeling density, heavy, confidence-inspiring, to lightweight rate ratio. Sorry, I'm a little gassy this morning. I think the burps or the hiccups or something. All right, so the overall length on this knife is coming in at about 8.5 inches. The overall blade length is coming in at about 3 and now at 9 sixteenths, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's just over 3.5, but the cutting edge is just under 3.5. All right, here's my dying micrometer. The blade stock coming in at, showing about 120 thousandths. The behind the edge is about 20 thousandths. And the knife at its thickest point is coming in at about 0.55 or point, what is that? 550 thousandths, just over half of an inch. A little bit over the expected. And then your overall height is 1.18 inches, which is pretty average as far as height. Spider Co's are going to decimate that and be way over. You know, whereas a couple other knives are going to be a little under. <laughs> All right, now for some size comparisons. Here is your Hinderer XM18 Skinny Sheep's Foot. This is going to be kind of like, we're going to start off with some of the big dog size comparisons, then we'll work our way down. So this is your Vero Isotope. Here is your Microtech SOCOM Elite. Much larger. So is the Vero Isotope. The Vero Isotope's huge. Here's your PM2. Worth it in here? No. All right. Next, let's go over your conventionals. Here's your rat model two and your rat model one. As you can see, the Sabenza and the rat model one have a lot of friggin' similarities, don't they? Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? Now, this is kind of actually interesting. And this is this is my first time noticing it, but... Yeah, these are two totally different knives, guys. 
but there there's a lot that you could compare here. Not enough to say that anyone's a design stolen or but I feel like somebody had influence from somebody else or there's a reason why both of these knives are great relative to their own price. Feldspar, more small feldspar, large feldspar. It's got a pipe. All right. And then last, let's do your Civivi sandwiches. And then we'll get on with the show. The show must go on. Here is your Civivi Praxis. And here is your Savivi Perf. It just doesn't want to sit on camera because it's a little salute. Alright, so as you can see, the Praxis is actually about the same exact size as the large Sabenza. I don't I never thought I'd be saying that because the large Sabenza is like, oh large Sabenza, and then the Praxis is like like I don't know, not elegant, whereas the Sabenza is, but whatever. Okay, so we already kind of gone over a lot of stuff, but let's go back over this blade. This is an S35VN blade with a crown spine that goes down, drop point, very, very beautifully hollow ground all the way out towards the tip on both sides. It does have a thumb ramp right here with some really, really, I would call it, uh, uh, what is it? It's it's like threads per inch. It's a high thread per inch versus like that jimping that's just fat and big. This is a high jimping per inch. It's like narrow and really, really good. And it's actually much more comfortable in my opinion while providing a lot of traction. This thumb stud is just okay. It is perfectly functional. But this is one of my problems with the Sabenza. And I don't I don't get this. And it's just a tiny issue. But why do you only put it on one side? I get it. The access on the lock bar side is going to be a lot more difficult. That's what this cutout here is not only for the lock bar access, but for the thumb stud access. But you could still do it. I just... I've always been biased. The first one that I've ever received that only had a thumb stud on one side was the Cheberkov Kukan. And I love that knife. Like, I might be on the hunt for it again. But it's frustrating because it only has that thumb disc on one side, but it's screaming reverse flick me. Reverse flick me, baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> awkward. All right. Anyways, there's that. Titanium frame lock here. Was, I wouldn't call it minimal hardware. I would call it an average amount of hardware. You get your pivot and then two screws right there. And then you have your barrel right here that is just kind of free floating within these slots that serves as the lanyard tube. There you go. On the back of these barrels, we have these rings that go around it just kind of for like added, uh, maybe added support too, but just kind of added design. And I say added support because maybe that big fat ring right there actually allows you know, more pressure to be there instead of just pushing there. Anyways, there's no cutouts on the inside, although it does show uh, 0-20, and I'm not sure what that means. Maybe that's when the scale was made. But there's no cutouts. Uh, this is riding on a phosphor bronze situation. Oh, I was like, what is that? It's grease. Uh, it's riding on a phosphor bronze situation. There's the stop pin right there. Zoop. which is also the other piece of hardware. That's what does make this kind of, you know, it doesn't have that floating stop pin either. It's got that stop pin that's built into the design for integrity in the first place. It's just kind of cool. It's like, it's, it's, it's a very minimal knife, but very elegant in its own right. As we can see here, there is no uh, hardened steel insert or anything it's no over travel stop you can overdo it but it's not it's not something that i, I have found to ever really be an issue and you know what <clears throat> i don't think they would honor it if you guys did that because i was reading over their warranty and it covers a lot of shit but in the end of it they're like yo we're not gonna honor this if we don't want to based on how egregious this thing comes in basically stating like if you guys are playing the system and you send them in some bullshit, they're going to send you some bullshit back, which is fine with me. You know, like don't, you know, they, they're, they're not telling you not to take it apart. They're not telling you, they are telling you no aftermarket parts that are going to mess it up. will still work on it. If the aftermarket part had nothing to do with the failure, yada, yada, yada. If you take it apart and jack it up, 
that's on you, not them. I would assume the same if you abuse a frame lock that there's really no reason. I mean, it has enough tension on it that you would have to try to do that, but it's so smooth that it's just pretty nice. So as you can see here, the action seems decent, um, but we'll get to that. We talked about the plunge guard. The plunge guard is pretty nice. Ergonomically, I really, really like this. This is very, very neutral. In use, it feels... <laughs> I, in use, it's not the best, but it's not the worst, and it's definitely above average. <laughs> like, all right, so here's your scale, right? Worst, best. It's like right here, okay? So it's definitely like past the halfway point as far as ergonomics go, but it's also like... I think it's just neutral ergonomics. Like, they're not dedicating to anything, which allows them not to do anything jack-of-all-trades, right? You can do everything well, but nothing perfect. It's kind of that idea. All right, next, these inlays. I talked about it. These inlays actually provide a really good traction. As my hands wrap around, you can see them wanting to grip onto that micarta inlay, and it just really just, uh, it feels good. Now, what's really cool about these inlays, which... I'm not suggesting that you take them out. Disclaimer, I'm not suggesting that you take them out. But you can. There is a hole punch on both sides that if you were to heat these up, kind of get that epoxy or whatever sticky tape that's in there, uh, gooey, there's a hole on either side that you can pop it up and kind of work your way up. I was tempted, but I didn't want to devalue the knife. If it's your knife forever, I mean... Do what you want to do. I'm not, I, I think that would void the warranty too, but I'm letting you know that there's holes in the inside that you can pop that up with. All right, so kind of my first little irritant right here. This is the lanyard tube, right? Not the lanyard tube, but like the lanyard bead, if you will. When you shake this knife, this thing jiggles, okay? This little lanyard tube right there, which, not a big deal, but with a knife that has such tight tolerances and so just nice feeling, um, and just this high quality piece, when you have something that jiggles, okay, I don't know if you guys can pick that up, but when you have something that jiggles, it makes it feel cheap. I'm not suggesting the Sabenza by any means feels cheap. And yes, I could put a dab of RTV or epoxy inside there and it would prevent it from jiggling. But that... I think is, I, I don't know that I like that. I would rather see you do, you know, uh, do that some other way. Because if you're going to, the, the Sabenza is legendary. Chris Reeve knives are legendary. And then I have something that goes and it jiggles. Now, you know, as the everyday person, you're going to call me an idiot. You're going to call me all these names for that. But there's something about that, that if I'm buying a knife for what the Sabenza is supposed to be, I want it to be what the Sabenza is supposed to be. This solid, airtight, vault-like lockup from the Chris Reeve Integral Lock. You're not getting that drop shut action. Oh, no. You're getting the nice, smooth action based on these phosphor bronze washers that you've never seen in your life. They kind of look like a gear pattern washer, but they're so nice. And if you use anything else other than Chris Reeve grease, you're dumb. Right? Like, that's what this is supposed to be. With a little bit of satire in there. So I just would rather not that jiggle. Not a big deal at all. Speaking of action. Okay. So the action on these. If this was 15 years ago. To where like some of the knives that came out 15 years ago. Some of them were on bearings but most of them weren't. Uh, Hinderers had shitty action. Yada, 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 right? This would be awesome. This would be fantastic. And it is good. It is satisfying. And it is a different type of thwack. But to, to prove how tight this thing is, right? That's me kind of tapping on the blade. Now, this is my... Hinderer skinny sheep's foot on phosphor bronze, mind you. Not 
That was a bad demonstration. But you see that though? That's the difference. And I can just drop it like that. I might have been holding. <laughs> I think I was holding onto the frame lock. Right? Now, going back here. And there's no way you're flicking this thing shut. Now, I get it. That was a really bad demonstration, but you kind of get my point. I get it. That's not what the Sebenza's for. I get it. That's not why you're buying it for. Everybody who buys it knows that that's not a thing. I get it. All right. But, I mean, to me, it's still like... Let's put it this way. Where's, where's another good example? Um... Ooh, you guys are going to hate this example. This. This is the QSP Legatus. Okay? Now, it's not about the action, but that's what this does. It is unbearing, so no, I'm not demonstrating the action. Ooh, didn't you have to touch it? But QSP is, in my opinion, somebody that does action really, really well. But not only do they do action really, really well, I obviously haven't carried this at all. I don't know if you guys can hear the back and forth. I've carried the Sabenza quite a bit. I've tried to break in the Sabenza, both naturally and forcefully. Let's rewind and talk about how there's a thing called Sabenza thumb. How there's a thing that it's it, it needs to break in. It needs a break in period. <laughs> The Legatus, the QSP Legatus for $280 did not need a break-in period. That thing came, the detent was riding on the tang, and there was a polished area on the tang where that detent ball rides, and it creates a smooth surface and interface between the two, allowing there to be very minimal to no friction. Okay? Now, yes, this is polished. Yes, this is nice inside. I don't get why... There's that. Now, there's the tension on the lock bar that creates pressure on the detent ball here, which causes there to be a little bit of tightness. And I appreciate it for what it is. But I also don't believe that we are stuck in the times where we should have to deal with that. I shouldn't have to, you know, spend $500 in a knife and then be like, it'll be good in two years once it breaks in. I don't think that's right. Um, that's kind of frustrating, but I ranted on it for longer than it's actually worth. If that makes sense, it's not that serious. So the action and this aren't that serious. Let me reiterate. They're not that serious. Yes. I just spent a whole bunch of time talking about it, but that's a pet peeve of mine, right? It's irritant. It, 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 it makes me frustrated that I have to deal with that at that price point, but this is still a really good knife. This is still decent action the ergonomics are great that blade shape is absolutely fantastic sabenza meaning worker makes a whole hell of a lot of sense this is showing up at dead center the lockup is showing up at a hundred percent but in a good way because the tolerances are so tight it has nowhere to go the sabenza is a good knife the chris reeve sabenza guys a huge staple in the community. He has done so much for the knife world that it's it's undeniable that you can't just say legendary, right? Absolutely legendary maker. The knife is really, really, really good. But it's 2021 and I wish we'd do a little bit more innovating. That's all I got, guys. My name is Tyler. I truly do love this knife. I do think it's worth the price. It was an honor to carry this from somebody who had such a hand in the industry. I kind of picked on your knife a little bit, but um, it's 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 easy to do when the knife has been around for 35, 45 years. Uh, being dead serious, this knife has been around that long. So, yeah, it's going to have some flaws from 40 years ago that some of the modern knives have fixed by now. I just wish that you would take a look at that and kind of make a slight change based on that but phenomenal knife cool ass company thank you for all the innovations
My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. And have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys.